Hey everyone, today is July 18th, 2023, and we are in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. We were here about a week ago when it was raining. It's rained a bunch more. I just want to take a look at one of the reservoirs, and then we're going to try going on some of the logging roads up here. I've never had good luck on these logging roads. They don't have a lot of beavers or anything very exciting, but I'll give it a shot. We haven't been up here in a while. It's been raining a lot. I'm gonna take a look at the first reservoir. That's the only one I'm actually gonna stop at, Lake Francis. Just curious if the spillway is running. The river up here seems pretty high. I'm just gonna take a good look at that. What you're seeing in the sky is mostly wildfire smoke. Yesterday throughout the day in my area, it got worse and worse to the point at night you could see it in your headlights like it was fog. You could smell it really strong. But by tomorrow, the wildfire smoke should be completely gone again as it blows back over the ocean. This is the worst wildfire smoke I have seen all year in New England. And it's almost as bad as the wildfire smoke I saw last year while visiting Oregon. So I'm pulling in here. I just want to take a look at the spillway. We were here last week in a vlog. I showed you where it was discharging. There's always a giant whirlpool there. But the Connecticut River that goes through here is running pretty high today. This bridge right up ahead, I'm just gonna stop on it for a moment and look at the spillway. And then I'm gonna quickly turn around. Hopefully the sky isn't letting me pass, just to continue, because I want to stop on the bridge for a moment. Yes, he is. So I'll do it after I turn around. Oh my gosh, the spillway is actually raging today. So yeah, I'm going to get out down here also. I want to show the discharge because that's probably raging too. There's no one down here today. I don't know if the wildfire smoke is actually keeping people in or not. They said there's a huge air quality warning, but the air is definitely better than it was this morning. It's been improving all day. It's about just after two o'clock today. Yeah, it's definitely gurgling down there a lot more than I've seen in the past, but not that much. They still got that generator running for some reason. Not sure what it's for. Look at, look at all the groundwater here pouring over the wall on both sides. I don't know if there's a pipe here or not. There might be a relief pipe. Not over there though, that's just coming down. The whole ground is shaking. I can do, definitely see some weep holes there where it's leaking water. From the freeze and thaw cycles, it kind of broke the concrete. This is the most I've ever seen it flowing here. We were here once in the winter, the snow was up over the fence. Could easily fall in. You hear that loud rumbling? It sounds like thunder coming out of that. This is the most I've ever seen it flowing. I have seen videos online if you look up the place. It's coming out of here so fast, it's just boom right over all this. It's not even getting the chance to turn around in certain people's videos. But this is the highest I have witnessed it and I've come up here maybe six or eight times in the past two years. You hear that? It's just awesome, the rumbling sound you can hear coming out of there. You know, I guess today we might actually have to check out some of the other dams on my way up to the logging roads. This is the most water I've ever seen. My area barely even rained yesterday, but I guess up here they got a lot. So at, basically at no point over the past two months, it seems, we've had a clear day of wildfire smoke. We've had days where you can see the blue sky, but there's always been that haze there. Just want to stop on this bridge for a moment and show you what's up. I don't know if you can tell, but that is a lot of water. Look at that. I've never seen this spilling before. Never. We've walked across that bridge before. You're able to go up there and walk across it. Wow. The spillway is raging today. I've come here to try to see this for years and never seen this before. All right, let's get off the bridge and continue. 
All right, I don't see it yet, but nope, this is not the entrance. There's the entrance. This is the first time in my life I have seen Lake Francis actually full. It's gotta be full if it's topping over everything. Oh my gosh, you can really see the wildfire smoke here. Take a look at this. Can't even see across the lake. The wildfire smoke is so bad. But I think this is the first time, it definitely is the first time I've seen it full. We were here last week and I was showing you, it was like maybe 10 feet below capacity. It is right up to the top and look at all the leaking groundwater. It hasn't rained all day. This is just groundwater leaking across the parking lot. Wow, look how full it is compared to last week. I think it's actually above capacity a few feet. This is so cool. If you guys seen my videos of the Connecticut lakes, we were up here I think two years ago during the severe drought. Last year was like the most killing drought we ever had it's just because of the severe heat. But two years ago, 2020, no that was three years ago, that was the driest year we ever had. And this reservoir, you could walk out there hundreds of feet. Not this year. It'll be quite a few years before it would ever get to that point again. All right, so we'll go up now to the first Connecticut dam and we'll see if it's blasting. I believe last week they were doing construction. They're probably still doing construction, so I doubt we can go near it, but I'm gonna try. Maybe we can zoom in from the road. I just wanna see the discharge. I'm glad they're actually doing construction because if, you see, if you've seen my other videos of that place, it is crumbling, that dam. And I know it's at capacity today. They're definitely letting it be at capacity. That thing was crumbling worse than abandoned dams I've seen. I just drove by a street sweeper on the other side of the road, right? Every person thinks they're allowed to go around the street sweeper into my lane. Why do they think they're allowed to do that and make me stop? Before we go any further, I need to fill up with gas. At least it's not the worst price here. Wildfire smoke seems to be getting a little worse up at this point. We're not far from Canada, but we're not going near the border today. Need to fill up. I'm below an eighth of a tank. But we'll be able to drive a while once I get gas. I also want to put some towels I bought yesterday under some of that stuff that's rattling in the back. Most of that rattling you hear when I'm on the dirt roads is... A giant power bank and a fan I have in the back for when I have to actually sleep in here. All right, everyone. We just took on 42 gallons, so that'll let us go like 900 miles. Much better than having to use gas cans every single day. I usually don't have to fill up now for about a week. One of the better investments I've made, putting a bigger tank on the truck. Doesn't affect MPG at all. That gas pump was out of paper and nobody was answering any of the doors on those buildings. So we're gonna go up north now. Wildfire smoke looks like it's blowing in a little more up here, but it's supposed to be gone by tomorrow. Coming up in a couple miles is the next dam. We'll see how it's doing today. Alright, so here we are at the next dam. They're going to be doing construction. Wow, I've never seen any of that with water coming out of it before. Look at this whole dam has water coming out of it and I don't think they can work because of that because where they're making repairs is now covered in water it does not go it's not going over the top yet so it still has some capacity but I'm sure with the river it'll be there today probably well looks like somebody's working here today there's one truck Unfortunately, we can't get near the spillway, but maybe when we get back onto the road, I can just pull over and zoom in, and we might be able to see it firing out. Because this one, even when it's not that rainy, 
the spillway fires it really far into the air. There's a lot of pressure under this dam. Oh, well, there's a lot of workers today. I'm gonna pull over and just show you what I can see. I don't think we can even see anything else. No, it's too hidden. We can't see where it's discharging, but I see the workers. I've never seen it this high, and it looks like it's just a foot or two below capacity. All right, so we're gonna get back on the road now. There's another dam we can stop at and check it out. Now, if I pulled in here, you see that? It's like a little peninsula, that little island thing coming out. This whole area during the drought a couple years ago, you could walk in this whole area. It was empty. There was rusted pieces of metal everywhere. It was a good place to explore. You could almost walk out to that island there with all the trees. All right, we're going to get back on the road, and I think only another mile or two is the next dam, which is actually very small. It's a very small dam, the next one. And then the third and fourth Connecticut Lake, I believe, are natural. I don't think they have dams at all. The fourth one definitely doesn't have a dam. It's got a beaver dam, which, make, which, which is making it like twice as big as it would be without it. But I don't even know why they call it a lake. It's not deep or anything. It's just a little pond in the woods that you can hike to if you park at the border building. I got videos of that too. Loose gravel. Making some kind of repair there. The lake is very high. Sometimes if you come up here in the winter, this whole lake is just covered in snowmobilers out on it. This is the second Connecticut Lake Dam, and it is, looks like it's, no, it's not topping. But they opened it, it looks like. Look down inside there. They opened it, maybe, or did it break the wood? Let's just take a look at this place. Pull right up here. I've never seen that before. Usually, they have this open where they're discharging it over here. See where they can, it looks like they can lift it up or something. Never seen it coming out of the. <laughs> I accidentally hit the horn, that scared me. I wonder if they opened that or it broke. They probably opened it. I don't see how it could have just broke all at once. You see the way it's put in with all those metal poles. So this is at capacity, it's like maybe six inches below the wood very high all right now we're gonna drive a few more miles and we're gonna go down a bunch of the logging roads up here this area doesn't have as many but there are still definitely hundreds of miles worth of them it rained all this morning and it did help clean a lot of the mud off the bottom of the vehicle but you can see on the hood it does nothing as far as getting that off the little stains from the mud bought a pressure washer once and I thought it would really help with that it helps with what I intended for mostly getting it off the rims because it throws you off balance at high speeds but it does not clean the vehicle at all you still got to manually scrub it is what I learned and I must have washed the truck five times in the past two weeks I'm just not gonna do it anymore I'll just do it every now and then when I'm not going to go off-road for a while because it's inevitable. It's just going to get muddy the next day. Kind of dumb. I might just still spray it off, especially when it's dusty because every time you open the doors it comes in. That's the thing I hate the most. Dust on everything inside it just makes it feel so dirty. We're on one of the logging roads now and this bridge here has the Connecticut River underneath it. Look how small this bridge is. 
It's amazing that the Connecticut River can fit underneath it. I would have stopped, but that car needs to get across. Just another less than 30 miles, that river, that's where it starts, right around Canada. It's an unnamed stream on the other side of the border. But it gets so big if you live in Mass or actually Connecticut, down there, it can be hundreds of yards wide. Up here, you could just walk across it in the summertime, maybe not even up to your knees when it's running low. This is a very smooth logging road, very well maintained. You built it right. All this rain, barely any potholes, barely any erosion, but I'm sure it'll get bad when we get out deep enough where they're not using it anymore. This road supposedly goes all the way through into Maine without having to go south like 100 miles. It's one of the only roads. I attempted it last year, but it became too muddy to even go down. Maybe it'll work out this year, I don't know. I have no intentions of going to northern Maine through this route, but maybe we can see if it's at least doable anymore. No one uses it. That's why it was so muddy and overgrown. This is an absolute amazing logging road. I haven't really hit any potholes or anything. This is an extremely smooth road and you can travel pretty fast. You just gotta watch it around the corners. You see there's a little bit of grass growing in the middle of the road. A lot of that is actually, I think, moss because it's such a wet year. That green you see in the center, a good amount of it's just moss. It's not used as much this far out. Beautiful road. I think the last time I made videos on these roads I was complimenting how well they were actually maintained. Extremely well built. Didn't wash out anywhere with all this rain. Zero damage. Because they just it, it, they built it with tons of gravel. It's not just dirt. I bet that's because this area might just have soil like this that they're using as fill, while other areas have to work with more dirt. It's not even shale, this is a very good road. If it wasn't for the twist and turns, I'd be able to go 50 without an issue on this road at all. But I'm trying to keep it around 30 now especially around these corners. Here we got a tiny bridge. The sun is finally starting to be able to filter through all the smoke. Looks like somebody's camp. I don't know if it's a rental or someone actually owns it. road is still in very good shape. Just a little bit of erosion on the steep hill. A little more erosion here. It's good to see the sun starting to come out. This week's supposed to be a little drier than all the wetness we've been having. bridge ahead. Is it going to be a tiny one? What's, what do we got? Another little teeny one. Or a big hole. Alright, this is the same road now. It's not as smooth. This area is more dirt, not as much gravel just a year ago, maybe it was two seasons ago, possibly, they just dug out all these ditches. See how deep that ditch is? Give it like five years. It won't even be scary anymore if you were to go into it. Now it is very intimidating still. 
They just replaced all the culverts. Yes, they are plastic ones, but at least they're extremely deep in the ground. The trees up here are all very healthy. Everything's green, very nice looking. If I remember correctly, right at the end of this construction area, I don't know how far they've been in the past year or so, but there was a beaver swamp that was causing some problems. I wonder if that's been resolved or not. It's been a while, so maybe, maybe they came back. I didn't realize even when they trap beavers in a year or two, a lot of times the beaver just comes back a different one. This part of the road is very pretty. So we're going to see if the beavers build back or not. Okay, this is a little weird. What I'm seeing here looks like a four foot plastic pipe, which is like six inches into the ground. Wonder how long that'll last with some big log trucks across it. I don't know when that was installed, but this excavation looks like it couldn't have been more than a year ago. That, that might be the road we're gonna turn around and go down, but because they're logging up here, this might be the more dominant road and it might go to a dead end if I remember correctly. I don't know why they even use a plastic pipe when it's that big. That's a little stream right there, which means a lot of rocks are going to go through it, grinding it down into little microplastics and especially accelerated when it sits in the sun a good amount of time. Not good. You know, someone in my comment section said something, and I did research, and they were right. Think about how many little plastic fragments are just getting thrown out into the waterways when you do a load of laundry with all the fake materials we use these days. Never thought of that before. Well, that's a good logging site. They just did that this year. You can tell. All the debris they left behind still has its dead needles. Right here off to the left was a thinning job, not a clear cut. I think it depends on the type of trees and the size of the trees when you want to do a clear cut or not. Sometimes if the trees are scraggly and you do a thinning job, it just causes most of the ones you left behind to fill in. They're just gonna die. They're unable to support themselves. They're unable to take care of themselves now that the sun is able to hit the forest floor. There's not enough moisture left behind because they're not used to it. They didn't adjust to it over time enough. But when the trees are substantial size, they usually do better. All right, this is not the road I thought it was. We might still be going in the right direction. The road I was thinking of, I may have been going up at a gate with a hiking trail or whatever. This is obviously not the same road. I think we're still on the right track. See how these big pumps we go over, like that one there? That's yeah, not a culvert. They just didn't want to jackhammer the bedrock out of the way. Especially for a road that might be temporary. They're not going to do that. This road's in very good shape. Here, the ditch has to be done out a little more. Maybe they hit bedrock, it might be it. Look at these metal pipes they threw off to the side. Not a problem, though. Kind of want to just know what's underneath me right here. Wonder what kind of culvert they put in in place of that, if it's another metal one or not. That's a big pipe. Most of the galvanization has been destroyed, worn down. Look at that, the whole bottom of the pipe is missing, which means it could erode and just wash out the road. But this will just sit here. It's, un it's unlikely they'll take it in for scrap. It's not worth that much. Gotta think, they gotta lug it so far. Is it even worth the 100 bucks they'll get in scrap? Maybe 200 bucks? Probably not. It'll just rot back into the environment. It's amazing me that these bigger streams that they're using plastic pipes 
Look at this. It's like a four foot plastic pipe. The rocks that are going to tumble through it in the spring thaw potentially will break that plastic so easily going through it. Right here appears to be a big beaver dam and they may have cut it because this looks like it was all flooded and with the amount of rain we've been having there's no reason it shouldn't still be flooded at this moment. But this pipe it's very deep in the ground and I can tell that's a very very thick plastic pipe. So I don't think it's going to crush or get destroyed in that sense. But only time will tell. I have not seen many of these massive plastic pipes be installed yet. We'll see what happens over time. See if it was a good idea or not. But keep in mind, this one here probably took over 30 years to get like that. So it served its purpose very well. And there's some kind of cage here. I don't know if that was part of the culvert or not. Like I said, I have not seen many giant plastic pipes like that installed. That one right there is very thick. I can tell it's one of the higher end ones. One of the lower end ones, like the lake drain they installed. I showed you guys that. It's kind of crushed like an oval, you know, the day they installed it already. This one here I can tell is considerably thicker. So maybe it'll last a while. Maybe not. I don't know. It just seems like the plastic could tear pretty easily with boulders rolling through it, which... Not there maybe because of the beaver dam, but at the other one I drove over, you can tell rocks are going to go through that like crazy after storms as it erodes the land, which is what the rivers do. Now, the plastic is not any cheaper, but they think it'll last longer, and I still don't think that'll last longer than a metal one. But the smaller plastic ones, I show you guys all the time, they're crushed, usually year one or year two. There's not many of them that last that long, so that's just outright stupidity even doing that. And I'm amazed the logging companies haven't figured that out by now. Most of them haven't figured it out. Some of them have. Some of them, I've seen them go right back to metal ones again. Like, did you see that to the left? There's so many rocks there that are going to go in a road through that pipe. Right here on this hill drainage ditch has so many rocks that are going to start rolling down when water's passing through it going down to whatever pipe is down here at the bottom maybe this right here to the left is the gated road i was thinking of it might be i'm going to keep on the main road for now though so what do you guys in the comments think is that going to be a problem that plastic pipe because I personally do not see that outlasting a 30-year metal one. Here's a metal one. There might be more than one. This is where the beavers were a problem, and I can tell they obviously did something about it. Okay, they have a really big metal pipe, and they have two really big plastic pipes on each side, and I can tell the beavers are still a problem here, but I want to get out and show you guys what's happening here. We were here about two years ago, and... It's definitely not as bad as bad of a problem, and maybe the beavers for the time being are cooperating. Sometimes they just do, and I cannot explain why. Sometimes beavers just build a dam up there. There's really not a reason why. I doubt the logging company put a fence up for a planned beaver dam, but there you go. The beavers are just building a dam there. Sometimes a beaver will start a dam there if it's a planned dam. You put up a structure for them to build against easily and they'll usually follow it. But a lot of times the beaver will come down here and plug this anyways along with that for another level in their pond. Last time we were out here, there was a beaver dam right there backing it up right to the road. They obviously cut that with the excavator and it's no longer a problem. The last time I was out here, this pipe was 100% here. I don't remember if that was here. That looks like it may have been there a few years. It already has the iron stains on it. This one over here may have been here. I really am not sure. They may not have changed the pipes at all. I'm not too familiar with the area. But everything's working out right now with the beavers. They're not plugging these at all, which is absolutely amazing. Because that right there is very new that is a brand new beaver dam definitely installed this year did the logging company rip it down when they ripped the one across the road down i'm gonna say probably but i'm amazed the beavers are not messing with the pipes we're gonna continue down the road and see 
what else we come across. We'll probably go on a couple more hours down this road before I decide to go home for tonight. I don't plan on staying out here. These roads are never that exciting because there's never any problems. They just seem to take care of them very well in this area. There are a couple recreational things on this road, but just look at it. There's never anyone out here. This might be where the gate is at the top of the hill. Matter of fact, I think it is, and you see the main road, which continues, is no longer dominant because they're not using it. I believe that's where we're gonna go now, and I explained that I had problems there, I think a year or two ago, trying to get into Maine via the roads, which Google Maps says exist, and I could see they do exist, but they're just so muddy that I couldn't get down them. Maybe we'll be successful this year. Just wanna see if I'm in the right spot. The top of this hill might have a gate, if I'm in the right spot. The logging roads I'm usually on, I know by heart every single one of them, and I know what areas have problems all the time. I know where the problems are gonna be, when they're gonna be before I even show up. These roads, I don't have that knowledge of them. definitely a trail you could park here and do it yeah that's a bathroom 100% it's got the big stink stack on the back all right so we're going to continue down that other road at the bottom of this hill now some people have asked me in the comments and almost every logging road like this in northern New England across the three states. Vermont doesn't have that many logging roads, but still got a good amount of snowmobile trails. They're all open. All these logging roads you can go snowmobiling on, typically. It would be marked otherwise if you couldn't. The rule is if it's not plowed, you can use it in the winter. Most of the logging roads do not allow ATVs though, but that will be clearly marked where you can and can't. Got some erosion there in the ditch, not bad though. But all that gravel and stuff you see eroded in the ditch to the right had to go through that plastic pipe, which I talked about is wearing it down and that's why all the metal pipes, the bottoms are missing. It wears the galvanization down and I've showed you inside some pipes, it's shiny on the bottom because it's like sandblasting the pipe, which causes it to now rust out very fast. Without the galvanization, the rust takes over and usually with the help of iron oxidizing bacteria eating it. Right here we got a good amount of erosion. Not the worst, maybe eight inches, some of those drops that I'm avoiding. The road feels very soft here where they're not using it. And this is where the road is gonna start getting pretty bad. They don't seem to be using it. And they may have just used it a few years ago. It's not overgrown. I can tell they trimmed it within the last year, so they may be going to reopen it again, or maybe they just trimmed it for a little bit of logging in the middle of winter when the ground is frozen and they don't have to worry about getting stuck or muddy. It's also way smoother in the winter with all the packed snow and it's got to put the chains on. So this section of road is getting a little worse. I'll show you whenever we come across something interesting. I'm just going to drive on top of the hump where the grass is. It's a bit smoother. The rest of it, the dirt which makes it smooth, 
is eroded, so it's a very rocky road, which makes it considerably more uncomfortable to go on. Right here, there's a good amount of erosion where our tracks are. Right here, we got a giant hole really big hole. I want to get out and inspect that to see how far I can drive over on the grass to the left. First thing I'm noticing getting out of the vehicle, see all the grass is all pushed over. That would be from the rain yesterday, all the rain we've had in the past month. It's safe to say we have a failing culvert, right? No, it may have just been going over the road because it's clogged and it washed it out, but that pipe already looks like it's in very bad shape to begin with. Let's see what we got. The pipe may have just been not able to handle it. There's very little debris actually in the way of it. It's got a little bit of excavator damage, but nothing that bad. This is from water going over the road. I don't think the pipe is washed out, so I don't think I have to worry about where I'm walking. Oh, that, that pipe is still in great shape. It's just probably undersized with all the severe rain we've been having. These older pipes compared to the newer metal ones were much thicker steel. So, this is very narrow still. I don't know if I want to go across this because if you see from the bottom of this to the top, that is like halfway above my knee yeah I'm not gonna go across this we're gonna go explore somewhere else I don't see any tire marks except the ATV that's obviously gone through here so until they fix this this road is done for now got a strawberry growing right there I am not willing to risk going through that. It's too narrow. There's not enough space for me to go through there. So now we gotta back up quite a ways. This is way too narrow to do a three point turn anywhere. Very steep drop and a fairly deep ditch on the other side. I can just see it when I was parked right there looking back at the vehicle. There's just not enough clearance. I think that's worse in real life than you're seeing on the camera. I got just over 16 inches of clearance and I don't feel good going over that. I feel like I'm going to scrape up the undercarriage very badly. I don't think I would get stuck though. I don't. Just don't feel like causing damage. now been backing up it says 0.6 mile it's a lot more than I thought but I think now we finally got to a place I can spin it around we don't have the deep ditches anymore so that was a little more than I thought it was gonna be had to back up a little further than I thought Still pretty narrow right here. Is that a seven point turn? All right, we're coming back up. We're about to go back to that junction where the gated road is. All right, we're about to get back to that gated section of road and here we are. I just want to stop and maybe put something in the road to warn that there is a issue up there. I have a couple of yellow signs. I might use one of them. I don't have any poles with me, but I'm going to maybe find a stick. Just going to pull over right here. That guy was just checking out beavers. I'm going to tell him, um, hey, if you go straight down the little narrow road it's washed out there just okay. so you know I had to back up quite a ways okay. yeah um there's a road going up to a gate that's clear but if you go down there it's yeah. washed out you may have some problems all right no it's all you're, you'll be alone cool. all right. have a good day yeah, you too. Thanks, buddy. all right 
right, we're gonna try going down another road now that I don't think I've explored before. This one looks like it might go somewhere. It's going downhill. And this might go on the other side of where those beavers are. We're close enough in the area. That same waterway might pass down through here, probably, if it goes that far. Got some really big culverts there. They don't even have holes rusted through them, but I guess they decided the bridge was a better choice. Maybe they got washed out and they had to fish them out of here. All right, there is a bridge missing, but I think maybe we can go through it. I'm in four wheel drive now. How's this look? I don't see a problem at all. It's not much water. I don't see this being soft. Just going over a few big rocks. And that was good. It looks like they actually planned it to be a water crossing. It looks like it's been like that a while. Probably a little rougher than when they did it. All right, um, it's the end of the line. Look at this. We got nothing right here, although I can tell that used to be a road, but probably two decades ago. And we go the other way on this little fork. Maybe in the winter people still use this as a hunting trail or something, but I don't think anyone's gone down there and maybe Maybe five years, maybe 10. It just abruptly ends. This road is in pretty good shape and it just abruptly ends like that. It looks like this road's had maintenance done or trimming at least in the past couple of years. Someone's maintaining it. You can see a lot of wildfire smoke right now against that mountain. It seems to be coming and going. It's now bad enough that the sun is no longer shining through it. Well, now we know there's nothing down this road except a interesting water crossing, which we'll be back up to in just a minute. All right, we're coming back up to the water crossing. Here we are. Doesn't look as scary from this side. Not at all. Could this be where those giant culverts were pulled out of? Maybe. way easier that time because that time I could actually see and avoid the big rock. Alright, get out of four wheel drive. Unnecessary. These roads are in very good shape. I only use it if the roads are muddy, snowy, where you need the extra traction. The rear, rear wheel drive sucks. It'll make you spin out or fishtail if you have a soft road. It uses more gas though, so that's why I don't use it if I don't have to. I'm back there, that was rocky, that water crossing. I don't think I would have got stuck. I don't. But it's good to use it. Shift it on and off every now and then, leave it on for a while. It makes the parts not seize up or get stuck in either position, which they can for people who never use it. All right, everyone, I've been on the road now about two hours going south on the way home, and I just came across this store. I'm going to run in here and try to find something to eat. I'm glad so many of you like my vlog-style videos. You know, on days like this, I go out. I don't really find anything. I just show you guys what I'm doing, and these videos are easier to put together because they don't really require too much editing. You just have to join them together well 
so it doesn't make popping sounds and stuff. They're a lot easier to edit together, I feel. So I'll keep making these kind of videos as long as you guys like them on this channel. While when we actually find something really interesting, I put it on my main channel. So I'm going to find something in here to eat for the next couple hours home. I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching and have a great day.